ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my adorable co-host, Teddy. And today we're talking about some AMD Navi news, which is really, really good because <laughs> NVIDIA seriously needs some competition so they don't start naming their GPUs more stupid things and causing me to go absolutely crazy. Daddy, chill. Okay. So... <laughs> So before we jump into it, I just want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, ekoffers.com. So if you need a Windows 10 license because you changed your motherboard and now it's throwing a fit, <laughs> you can go and uh, pick that up if you want, or if you're looking for a Microsoft Office, you can grab that as well. Uh, I do have a discount code, put it at the bottom of the screen here, so you can use that and get 20% off. So just use that, help support me, help support the channel, and uh, get yourself a bunch of Windows 10 licenses because you're gonna need them if you change motherboards as often or CPUs as often as I do and you can't be bothered calling up Microsoft every single time. So today we're talking about Navi. Now a bunch of tech sites reported on this. I'm just gonna use WCCF Tech because they wrote a very good article detailing everything. So this actually came from Reddit, interestingly, and the article reads, the listing at CompuBench was a compute bench, I guess, was revealed by Dylan522P over at the R Hardware subreddit on Reddit. The site lists down the specifications and performance metrics of a device codenamed 66AF F1. And from the first impression, this seems like a next gen, ba next gen part based on the Navi GPU, as this specific device ID hasn't appeared before. Now, one thing to note is that de this device may be based on the Navi GPU architecture or something entirely different. So definitely take this information with a grain of salt. So this is really good because we haven't had that much information regarding the performance of Navi so far. And it's looking like this part that showed up in the test has 20 compute units, which means it would have about 1,280 stream processors. So that means it's definitely aimed at the mid-tier cards. For reference, a popular AMD graphics card, the uh, RX 580, that has 36 compute units, which means it has 2,304 stream processors. Uh, so obviously this is a little bit lower, but with the advancements of Navi, being that it's seven nanometer and all the other advancements, especially as I would imagine in memory, as I would, I, I would be surprised if they went with HBM2. They certainly could. I would think that, I mean, it's not out of the question, and they certainly might, but I would really think that GDDR6 would probably be the better option to go for, uh, especially for these more mid-range cards because of the pricing. But we'll just have to see. So let's take a look at the performance then. So when we look at those performance numbers, at first glance, it looks very, very good for the supposedly Navi GPU compared to the RX 580. But take a look at the API. So, you know, DirectX versus OpenGL, even if you're testing the same GPU, say two 580s, you're gonna see a difference there because of the difference in API, which is obvious. But even with that, this is looking very, very promising for the Navi GPU. You would obviously expect it to do very, very good. And the performance here matches that of, say, like a Vega 56, which certainly means in terms of where this is aimed, it's very much in the mid-range. And this would be to compete on NVIDIA's side with things like the RTX 2060, uh, the GTX 1660 Ti, 1660 and I guess as far as the uh, older GPUs go, uh, things like the 1070, 1070 Ti, and it would probably destroy a 1060. So this is good. I, I definitely think this is the area where AMD really needs to hit NVIDIA. You may say, well, what about the high end? I mean, there's a Radeon 7, but you know, like something to compete against the 2080 Ti, for example. That's good, but those are all the enthusiast GPUs, and although they're very impressive, they don't sell that many of them because they're so expensive, not that many people can afford them. That's why they're called enthusiast parts. Whereas the mid-range cards tend to sell a lot because more people can afford them. And for most people who the vast majority of gamers run a 1080p screen, then uh, maybe they run a high refresh rate 1080p screen now, but still most people are on 1080p. These are the cards they're gonna be wanting to get. So hitting NVIDIA in the mid-range, especially now that they've got a, a way too stacked mid-range, like there's just way too many 
NVIDIA cards, I think they've kind of oversaturated their own market with with GPUs. I guess their thinking is if they if they sell NVIDIA, it's better than someone buying AMD. So it doesn't matter which one they sell as long as they're selling something. But to me anyway, I feel like it's confusing for consumers and it's just too oversaturated. But this is going to be the, the good area for AMD to definitely hit NVIDIA in. It does need to be said though that in compute testing, this Navi GPU doesn't do very good. But that's to be expected. As the article says, in compute benchmarks, however, the card is almost similar to the RX 580, which is what we had also been expecting since AMD Navi GPUs were tailor-made for maximum graphics and gaming performance rather than compute horsepower. The deals with Microsoft and Sony for their next generation consoles made that much very clear. So this means that AMD, how do I basically put this? So compute is what you need for like workstations and for number crunching and things like that. Previous AMD cards, a lot of them had actually been used and even the Radeon 7 now is used, I would say some people would be using it for compute purposes, you know, workstation purposes rather than gaming purposes. The Radeon 7 was definitely marketed to be a gaming GPU a little bit for sort of like workstation stuff or at most 50-50 gaming productivity. But uh, it's seeming like the Navi GPUs are just completely focused on gaming, which is exactly what we want. We want a Navi GPU that you know can compete with Nvidia very much so especially in the mid-range and that's looking like what it'll be so if you were thinking about using one of these for uh, productivity purposes as far as this one goes as far as these leaks go it's not looking very promising uh, for productivity use cases so definitely take these leaks with a huge grain of salt I certainly am but if this is true or you know looking like it could be true then this is very promising for AMD. A lot of us are just frustrated by the lack of competition in the GPU market because we want it to be more like the CPU market where you're having this great competition. Hopefully Intel hits back with something spectacular this year and you have this great competition between AMD and Intel which brings the performance up and prices down rather than what we have right now which is almost like an Nvidia monopoly and it just means that you as the consumer are the ones that kind of get screwed because you're having to pay higher prices for not less performance, but basically whatever performance NVIDIA deems good enough to make you buy the GPU. It's very reminiscent if you think back a few years ago of how Intel used to be with their CPUs. Uh, just look at the differences between, between say like Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, you know, so on. They just didn't really feel the need to innovate all that much because they didn't have any real competition at the time. And that's kind of how NVIDIA has been in the last few years. So this is looking good. Uh, we have to wait before more information comes out. But yeah, I, I'm, if this is to be believed, then it's looking promising. But I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Maybe you've heard things about Navi that maybe I haven't or anything else. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about it. Are you looking forward to it? What do you think it's going to be like? And basically, do you think it's possible for AMD to compete with NVIDIA? Or do you think NVIDIA is just pulled so far ahead that AMD will not be able to catch up? I will say though, I remember if just a few years ago that people were saying the same thing about Intel and AMD in the CPU market. They said, Intel's so far ahead now, AMD will never be able to catch them. And look what happened. So definitely don't count them out. Now I thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.